Hello everyone, this is Little Black Dragon, and you are watching another installment of Let's Play Dragon Age Origins Dwarven Commoner Edition. In our last installment, uh, we... <clears throat> d ...did a uh, couple of errands in Denerim before we went to the Brazilian Forest to grab a couple of toxin extracts for a side quest in Denerim. And in order to save some time, I actually checked uh, Verathorn's store off-screen, and he did in fact have the toxin extracts that we were looking for. So we were able to do that, and I sold a bunch of uh, our junk items in the meantime, which uh, brought us to a total of 220 sovereigns, which is quite a bit of money. So that was very nice. Um, so we, or rather, uh, what we came to accomplish was uh, completed. So with that, we're going to quick make a stop at Soldier's Peak before we return to Denerim to complete some side quests and then go rescue the Queen. And that is g the... Uh, agenda for this episode and uh, the next uh, couple of episodes to come. Now what I don't get is why we have to take that back passage. Why couldn't we just... Oh, we... never mind. I'm not even going to ask. Okay, so let's see. Um... Well, I kind of want to keep hold of this antique crossbow since it's already at its highest, but at the same time, uh, the bow that Liliana has is actually, uh, better, so I'm just going to store it in the chest, and it's a DLC item that can't be transferred anyway, so, whatever, and this will come with me into, uh, Dragon Age Awakening, no matter what, so I'm gonna store this guy as well, uh, just to stave on space. Um, let's see. We have finally acquired the Ancient Elven Gloves, and if I am not mistaken, we have the boots now, as well as the actual armor. Now, I don't remember if we actually have... I don't think we actually have the, uh, helm for this, which I'm not sure if we missed this or what. But whatever, we have those things, and let's see. This is all good stuff. I'll probably make sure to get all of this stuff uh, withdrawn before we actually do the final battle. Um, so we've got all of that. And we still have all of these gifts, which we're going to take out before the day is out. Um, going to store that and that. Um, and these and probably these and I think that's about it so with that in mind um, I'm going to quick go to camp and see what can be done about uh, maybe donating some items to our uh, armies that we're gathering, and then we're going to head back to Denerim. So this should not take very long at all. Alright, so we're here, and there's Schmoople's now, you will notice that we now have uh, Lieutenant Kadrim, who is from the Red Cliff Army. 
now at our side. So now we have pretty much everybody. So let's see who we can donate to. Uh, we can turn in that one amethyst that's in our pack for the dwarves. Uh, we can turn in runes for the circle. And I'm just going to give them all the runes since the runes we currently have aren't particularly useful. Um, and this should make the mages a bit more potent in the final battle against the Archdemon, which uh, for those of you who haven't played Dragon Age will learn more about uh, once we actually get there. So we can give uh, stacks of death roots and deep mushrooms and uh, Elf Roots and Metal Shards for the Dalish. Um, and uh, the last thing is we can actually give money to Arl Eamon's Knights. Um, and you can go anywhere from 50 silver to all the way up to 30 sovereigns. Um, we're currently at 220 sovereigns. So, 30 sovereigns will lead us at 190, so I believe we can definitely afford that. So, let's give them 30 sovereigns. Alright, uh, actually, in fact, let's give them 30 more sovereigns, which will give us a nice round 160 sovereigns left. And I think that's... Everything brings us closer to victory. I think that's all we're going to uh, give them for now. Um, I think that's about it. Um, I'm actually surprised that Ogryn and a few others are not at 100% approval yet. Uh, this definitely surprises me. Um... Hmm... I think... what... I'm going to do is... You know what? Actually, I think I'll head back to Soldier's Peak really quick and just grab all the gifts and start uh, distributing those. Or, actually, uh, I have a better idea, actually. Now, you see, this can only be done in Dragon Age Origins because I think I'm just going to save my regular gifts for uh, when I get to Awakening. So I can use them on the uh, Awakening Companion since t sometimes you run out of gifts and you don't always get all their conversations. So what I think I'm going to do is actually buy some generic gifts from uh, Bodan here via the uh, Feast Day Gifts and Pranks DLC. Uh, you can buy generic gifts that give a flat uh, approval rating boosts of plus 5 and plus 10. Um... In addition to that, there are also uh, pranks that give flat disapproval ratings of minus 5 and minus 10, and of course there's the actual signature uh, gift and prank items that are unique to each companion, which are mostly there for jokes and fun and lollygagging and whatnot, although some of the items can actually be useful. But, I've never really found a need for them, which is why I've never bothered to obtain them. But I have used the generic gifts, which are distributed because usually if a companion's missing like 10 approval points or something, I'll just fill out whatever's left with the generic gifts. Um, so I'm going to talk to Bodan and get that straightened out. Are you sure I can't interest you in this hat? A pair of earrings, perhaps? A cheese knife? Uh, actually, I'd like to see your wares, Bowden. 
I'm sure you'll be pleased with the goods my boy and I have collected. And with your discount. Alright. So, if I'm not mistaken, the gifts are, um, here. And these are all the unique gifts. And let's see. So this, uh, the sugar cakes are what give a uh, base of plus five. You would think th that Sten would get more because he likes sweets, but apparently not. But they have plenty of those, and then the thoughtful gift, which gives a base plus of ten approval. And I think I will probably... I don't need that many. Uh, maybe... We'll just go with four of those for now. And we'll sell you that piece of quartz because apparently we don't need that. And... Those are all specific to companions. And so we got. Oh, and I guess that means. Oh, what? Oh, feast day gifts. Okay. And the one we haven't completed is feast day pranks. Um. Let's see. Um. So I know it is kind of cheating, but I usually like to make sure everyone is rounded out to a hundred approval before the game is over. And usually giving them small increments of plus ten doesn't actually hurt anything. Uh, and the DLC does come with the ultimate edition of Dragon Age Origins, but you can also buy it separately. Uh, let's see. So, give you one of those. It'll do. Sure. And... How nice. Give that to you. How nice. And that actually maxes you out. It'll do, sure. And that gives you plus 20. And that rounds everybody out. And with that in mind, uh... Actually, since we don't have a lot of time left, before we go, I think we should probably hear Bowden's story before we leave. So I think we shall do that, and, you, and that will be the end of our video. Are you sure I can't interest you in this hat? A pair of earrings, perhaps? A cheese knife? Uh, so what's your story, exactly? Hmm. I suppose since you told me about you being a Grey Warden, it's only fitting for me to be as open. I'm originally from Orzammar, just as you are, I suspect. You don't have the look of a surface dwarf about you. I was a merchant there, too. Merchant caste. These things are in the blood, you know. You can't just leave them behind. I ran a fairly successful business. Rare artifacts, you know. Old things, grand things. The nobles loved them. Reminded them of the lost glory days, I suppose. Um... I see. Uh, why did you leave? One day, a noble woman came to my store. She looked around for a bit and then started shrieking in dismay. Apparently, she believed that a pair of braces I had for sale once belonged to her brother. He'd been lost in a cave-in, you see, while on an expedition to clear out the darkspawn from one of the tunnels running close to the city. They were made specially for him. They're unique, she shrieked. He stole them from my poor brother's corpse. She had me arrested on the spot, of course. Nobles, they're touchy like that. Uh... Well... What happened then? Well, I didn't steal them. You see, I, I had been paying these castless thugs to venture out into the deep roads for me. The Lost Tigs, 
They're full of things that people left behind. Sometimes you can find a treasure, something worth a little gold. Hmm. Well, I suppose it's better to do something with them than leave them to rot. That's exactly how I see it. The noblewoman, she wasn't too happy with the theft of her brother's braces. I don't know what they planned for me, and I didn't want to find out. Bribed the guard that was watching me and took off for the surface first opportunity I got. Never look back. I suppose that makes sense, and honestly, uh, being a castless in Orzammar, I wouldn't think much of, well... That person was dead and in the middle of the deep roads, and there really wasn't any way of knowing who that person was anyway, unless you could somehow find out and actually wanted to find out about a pair of bracers. I mean, really, would you even care at that point? But it's understandable that this noblewoman would be upset about it, but having him arrested over it... I mean, I feel like they should have actually talked to him about it and actually went about to prove that was actually her brother's uh, bracers instead of, you know, just taking her word for it. But... eh, whatever. Either way, it was a fascinating story. Thank you. You're quite welcome. Now, is there anything the boy or I can get you? Well, um... You didn't mention your son in your tale. Ah, yes. I'm married to a fine woman back in Denerim, it's true. She'd give me a son if she could, but uh, that's not likely to ever be. Sandal here. I found him in the deep roads years ago. Abandoned, I think. And he was never quite right in the head. I took him in, and I brought him with me when I came here to the surface. He may not be my blood, true. But I think of him as one. We left Orzammar. That's right, boy. Maybe one day we'll see it again. Wow. I suppose, uh, blood isn't all that important. That's how I've always felt. As long as he's happy, so am I. It's not as if I don't benefit, mind you. Turns out the boy's a natural working with enchantments. He might have even been leery addled. I never thought of that before, to be honest. Happens sometimes. He can work an enchantment into just about anything, however, given some time. Could probably open his own shop, if he knew how. Enchantment. <laughs> well, he does seem to enjoy it, at least. Yep. But where do these goods come from? Certainly not the Deep Roads. Look, we... we don't rob people, all right? We don't take things from people that need them. The things in the law's tags, what good did they do lying there? I brought them back to Orzammar, where people could look at them and remember. It's not all that different up here. There are places long abandoned by the humans everywhere. Even more now, with the Darkspawn coming. What do you mean? People flee from the Blight with good reason, but they forget things. Things with value and meaning. They leave them behind because they're frightened and desperate. And sometimes, my boy and I, we find our way to these places before the Horde descends, and we save these things. I take them away so the Darkspawn don't get them. Is that so bad? They destroy everything they touch. Well, actually... I have to agree with you there. I suppose it's better than having the Darkspawn take it all. That's what I tell myself, too. Ah, these are dark times, indeed. Dark times, my friend. All right. Well, I should go. Of course. Good fortune to you and yours. Goodbye. All right. Well, that's Bowden's story. And we are way over the time limit, so I'm going to cut the video off here, but I will see you all in the next installment of Let's Play Dragon Age Origins, Dwarven Commoner Edition. Thanks for watching.